presentation is, is going to be a little different because, um, as uh, I'm sorry, your name is Allison. as Allison mentioned, um, I'm a filmmaker, and uh, you are going to be looking at a very short clip, a two-minute clip of a one-hour documentary called Guamia, uh, which I produced a few years ago, uh, which tells the story of an all-woman orchestra in Cuba. So. As you can imagine, because it's a very cultural theme, it, 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 it has a relationship with what everyone said, but in a way it's quite different. Um, I'd like to tell you how I uh, got to go to Cuba in the first place, which was not to produce this documentary at all, but to produce another documentary. I was sent by the Ford Foundation to produce a, doc a documentary on art and culture in Cuba. And uh, how I produced that documentary, a wonderful opportunity. I, you know, I had been briefly to Cuba before to, as a reporter to cover the Pope's visit, but I had never actually been uh, a, a period of time where I could be in the country, meet the people, and especially uh, look and find out all about the wonderful cultural things that were going on in the country at that time. Um, the, the the main thing that I give thanks to that first trip was that it, it helped me, it brought me in contact with the theme of my documentary, which was an orchestra composed entirely of women and conducted by a woman. And a lot of times the things that I've done before have been about women and women's rights. Uh, as soon as I met this group, uh, I was uh, fascinated by the music that they played, because it's a music uh, that is uh, Latin American. They play Latin American themes, but with a very kind of Latin American beat. I, I was fascinated by how um, the women's empowerment side of it. But it, uh, the, the most important thing uh, that interested me, uh, and that I saw right away that there could be a story in, in this orchestra, was that I could, it was a way of, for me to show the daily life of people in Cuba without talking about it directly. Um, in other words, I could show the life of the, of the people through the life of the orchestra, and at the same time talk about the orchestra, the music, the culture, many, many things. I had seen, a short time before, I had seen the Buena Vista Social Club, which I'm sure most of you here have, have seen, and if not, it's about Cuban music also, but showing a lot of uh, older men playing, Cuban older men playing instruments and so forth. And I thought that this uh, topic of the women, all of them very beautiful women, young, vibrant, uh, was, was a contrast to the Buena Vista Social Club. Uh, and again, gave, gave me an opportunity to go into people's homes, um, talk to them, talk about some of their hopes and dreams, and at the same time cover uh, an area which was very universal, which is how an artist and an artist's family has to struggle, has to make a lot of sacrifices to bring about their art. This, this was something that I knew would tie in in a universal way with audiences uh, all over the world, in the US, Europe, wherever you went, people would identify with the theme, the universality of the artist's struggle. Uh, and, and at the same time, I, again, I would be able to show daily life uh, in Cuba. Um, I had to walk a very, very fine line while shooting in Cuba. And a lot of people have asked me, how did you manage to go in at a time, uh, this was during uh, Clinton, so it wasn't too difficult, but how did you manage to go in to the country and um, be accepted, uh, have the government, the Cuban government accept your shooting there, uh, accept your going in and asking very, very intimate questions of uh, families, uh, you know, with no problem. Uh, and and I, I must say that I had to walk a very fine line. I, I uh, purposely uh, did not ask a lot of very controversial questions because I knew the minute that I would do that, I would be in trouble. I, um, but and I was like a, a little bit like a trapeze artist, walking a very fine line, 
trying to ask questions that would show daily life, but at the same time not uh, get the people that I was interviewing in trouble, because that was another option, or uh, being considered someone that shouldn't be there because I was asking controversial questions. Um, my, as you'll see in the little clip, you're not going to see much of the documentary, you're just going to get a flavor for it, but what I did in the documentary was um, I never had a narrator, the, if there's a script, but instead of having a narrator with opinions or a point of view or taking sides or anything like that, what I did is I had the subjects themselves in the documentary speak and tell their story. And I sort of wove together the story of how they prepare for a concert uh, with the story of their daily lives. So um, I think the best thing, because I'm not a speech maker but a filmmaker and I do much better when I actually am producing or just showing my work than actually talking about it. Perhaps the next thing to do now would be to short, show you the short little clip. And then if any of you have questions about the documentary, you know, I would be happy to take questions. Cuban music. That's old men playing dance music, right? Wow. Meet conductor Zinaida, Yoima, Analan, Yesenia, and five other amazing musicians. They are the breakthrough Cuban musical group, the Camarata Romeo, playing rumba and baroque folk songs and African beats. Narrated by the women themselves, Cuba Mia shows you a side of Cuba you've never seen before, the colors, sounds, and emotions of the Havana streets. We meet their families and friends, and share in the hopes and dreams of their everyday lives. Preparing for their year-end concert, everything goes wrong. Except the music, which is glorious. Cuba Mia, 90 minutes of sheer musical joy. But for me, in hearing the presentation that might spark uh, a lot of questions from the audience, I thought that we had a tremendous history uh, from Dr. Smith having been there really from the beginning of the Cuban Revolution. That was really an exciting historical uh, sort of uh, overview. And what, what triggered, uh, in my mind, uh, were questions around uh, what um, ended up coming up again uh, with um, Mr. Uh, Per Tierra, which was this the, the the interest of the USA in Cuba and what is holding the USA government um, in an old paradigm and why administration after administration we we, we see such uh, an attachment to the past. So that that's something that I thought would be interesting for the panel to comment on in, in understanding the USA and its history. Uh, but I, I I would also like to. Um, uh, make sure that we have a chance to hear more about um, the cultural life in Cuba from Cecilia. So why don't we start with questions and uh, our volunteer will um, help distribute the microphone for me. Okay. 